I just spent way too long benchmarking this game on so many GPUs. Every 40 series GPU, every 70 series GPU from AMD, some 60 series GPUs from AMD to compete against the 40 series ones that they haven't really launched competitors for, and we're gonna be testing out the ARC A750 and the A770 in Unreal Engine 5. Now, Unreal Engine 5 is a big deal, whether you like it or not, because so many games have committed to using us, so many big game developers. We're gonna be seeing a lot of Unreal Engine 5 games coming out starting in the near future. And this is the first third-party Unreal Engine 5 game that has been released. Now, there's some pros and cons to why this one's a good and a bad one to test. Um, also, what I mean by third-party Unreal Engine 5 game is uh, Epic, who develops Fortnite, also develops Unreal Engine 5, and they did port uh, Fortnite into Unreal Engine 5, including the major new features, which are like the Lumen lighting system and uh, Nanite and virtual shadow maps, things like that. So I've already tested Fortnite when that switch happened, and I featured that as my Unreal Engine 5 test in some games, but I'm really interested in what third-party other development studios do with this. Now, this game's interesting um, because it's the first one out. There have been some other games that are in early access, like I believe Satisfactory, which is still technically an early access game, has got an Unreal Engine 5 update recently. And we're gonna be seeing so much bigger Unreal Engine 5 games coming out soon. Uh, one reason why this game's not gonna be the best uh, you know, reflector of overall performance in Unreal Engine 5 is just because, well, you can do a lot of things with Unreal Engine. This is a small enclosed space uh, horror game. Uh, which means that, like, you're in small, enclosed environments. So for one thing, I don't think they actually need the Nanite system, which allows you to uh, adjust levels of detail of objects very, very uh, uh, accurately and quickly on the fly. Whereas here, that's not really needed because you're never very far away. So they don't need a lot of different levels of detail. They are using the Lumen lighting system. But the other thing is, since this is very small enclosed spaces, the overall performance of this game is a lot higher than I think a lot of other Unreal Engine 5 games are going to be. So just keep in mind that while this will be interesting to see the relative performance difference in this game, specifically addressing the Lumen lighting system, uh, which is what the big Unreal Engine 5 feature that this game is really using, it's not featuring things things like Nanite or going to be just in general as demanding as I think a lot of upcoming Unreal Engine 5 titles are going to be. Uh, we're about to get into the head-to-head -head comparisons, but I thought I'd show you the graphics menu here real quick to explain a couple of things. Uh, number one, it does have ray tracing on or off, and I will be testing that. So the Lumen lighting system is the main thing we're focusing on in this video, how it performs on the different GPUs. Uh, when ray tracing is turned off, you're using Lumen lighting's um, uh, uh, software-based global illumination. When you turn on ray tracing, it now becomes hardware accelerated using the GPU's hardware acceleration, where we would see usually NVIDIA have a bit of an advantage over AMD, for example. But it doesn't tend to be super demanding in the other games like Fortnite that I've tested it in. Uh, so we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, but it, uh, what does it do when you hardware accelerate it? It actually reduces performance, but but, uh, but it's able to then make the lighting a bit more accurate, reflections a bit more accurate, that kind of thing. Also, while I won't be testing them in this video, I will note that uh, this game does feature TSR, which is the upscaling algorithm built into Unreal Engine 5, but then also features DLSS, which is NVIDIA's upscaler, XESS, which is Intel's upscaler, which does have fallback support to other GPU brands, and AMD's uh, FSR2 upscaler, which just supports it's all brands pretty much equally. Uh, also, I will note that the graphic settings only go up to high. There's low, medium, and high on all these settings. So when I'm saying I'm testing at high, that is the highest that it goes. Um, so when you're looking at the benchmarks, just keep in mind high is not a step below ultra. That's just as high as it goes in this game. So let's see how the various GPUs stack up relatively to each other, especially playing around with whether the ray traced version of the Lumen lighting system is turned on or off. Although we'll, we'll st start out with the 4090 uh, with RT on versus off, just because I don't think there's honestly that huge of visual or performance differences. Uh, but let's go ahead and check out the benchmarks and I'll give you a few more final thoughts at the end of the video. Since the RTX 4090 has no direct competitor in either price or performance, I thought I'd test it first by just looking at what about with ray tracing enabled versus not enabled, is there that big of a performance gap? And it looks like at least on the RTX 4090, which is a very strong ray tracing GPU, we only see a 7% boost by turning off the hardware accelerated lumen, and both of them are getting a little above or below 100 frames per second at 4K. So let's drop to some other GPUs that actually compete. Here we're looking at the 7900 XTX versus the RTX 4080. The 4080 is winning by about 4% with no ray tracing enabled, so this is the soft 
software accelerated lumen, and both of them at 4K resolution are over 70 FPS, offering very similar experiences. Remember, the 7900 XDX does cost less. It's about 950 versus about 1100 for the 4080. What if we turn on ray tracing? Well, now we see the 4080 winning by about 12%. Both GPUs lost a little bit of performance. It's just that the 7900 XTX lost a little bit more performance, although it's still well over a 60 FPS average at 4K resolution, and the 4080 uh, is, again, 12% better than that. So let's go ahead and look at 1440p resolution, because while these are strong GPUs, a lot more people are playing at 1440p than 4K. At this, both are delivering over 130 frames per second at 1440p high with the ray tracing turned off, and the 4080 is once again 4% faster than the 7900 XTX, which when in actual use, you wouldn't really notice the difference. And when you turn on ray tracing, both GPUs are over 100 FPS still. And uh, now it's a 9% lead for the 4080. At this high of a frame rate, again, I really don't think you would notice too much of a difference between which GPU you were using, but it is definitely a win uh, for the 4080. Uh, a bit more so than what we saw with ray tracing disabled. Now let's step down a GPU tier and go back to 4K high with no ray tracing. This is the 7900 XT, we lost an X and some performance, and the 4070 Ti. Here we're seeing the 7900 XT 2% faster without ray tracing at 4K, and both GPUs are finishing this benchmark run uh, around 60 FPS, although um, there were certainly scenes where it was below 60 FPS. Now, if we turn ray tracing on, the 4070 Ti is now winning by 4%, so very close performance, and both GPUs are a little under 60 FPS at 4K, but again, this is native, no upscaling, so overall, this game just does not appear to be incredibly demanding, and again, both GPUs are performing very, very similarly. If we drop down to 1440p, which is, again, I think, a more likely resolution for a, a lot of people, we're now seeing both GPUs delivering well over 100 frames per second at the high setting without ray tracing enabled. It's a 2% lead for the 7900 XT. Uh, again, it's like 120 FPS versus high teens, so not a big difference here. Um, if we turn ray tracing on, both GPUs uh, drop a little bit of performance, but they're still right around 100 FPS. Uh, and the 4070 Ti is now winning by 6% against the 7900 XT. So again, it does go from 2% behind to 6% ahead, but either way, it's still very, very close to just being a tie on both GPUs. Now let's step it down, step it down to the 4070, and AMD has not rela uh, released a new gen competitor to the 4070, so here I'm showing the 6800 XT, which costs about 500 at the moment, the 6950 XT, which costs about 600, sometimes a little bit more, and the 4070 costs 600, so these are the nearest price competitors. Uh, the 6950 XT is the furthest ahead by 13%, and 7% ahead, uh, 4070 7% ahead of the 6800 XT. Um, if we turn ray tracing on, the 6950 XT is now 15% ahead of the 6800 XT, and the 4070 is 10% ahead of the 6800 XT. Again, it does cost, uh, the, you know, the faster GPUs here do cost $100 more. Now, none of them are delivering a 60 frames per second uh, experience at 4K resolution, so you would actually want to upscale or turn down settings, or, you know, it's a slow-paced game, so maybe you wouldn't need to. But if we drop down to 1440p, which is really where GPUs of this class are more at home, uh, then we're now seeing them all closer to 90 or 100 FPS. Uh, the 6800 XT and the 4070 are tied without ray tracing enabled at around 95, and the 6950 XT is 12% faster at about 105. If we turn ray tracing on, the 4070 is now 13% ahead of the 6800 XT. The 6950 XT is actually still slightly ahead by like one frame over the 4070. And all the GPUs are getting a very good experience at high settings with ray tracing enabled. It's the difference between 80-ish FPS on the 6800 XT and closer to 90 on the other two GPUs. And uh, these GPUs aren't completely out of place at 1080p either, so I thought I'd ch test that out. At 1080p high settings, the 4070 is 6% ahead of the 6800 XT, and the 6950 XT is 12% ahead of the 6800 XT. Uh, but all of these GPUs are delivering such a high frame rate. Um, even the 6800 XT is over 130 frames per second, so I don't think we have a lot to worry about. If we enable ray tracing, 
Uh, we now see the 4070 actually leading by 22% over the 6800 XT. So it looks like the 4070 really favors the lower resolution as well as ray tracing. And the 6950 XT is 14% ahead of the 6800 XT, but all of them are once again delivering a great experience. The 6800 XT is still averaging over 110 FPS with ray tracing enabled. Uh, let's jump down to another class of GPU. So the 4060 Ti, again, doesn't really have a new gen competitor. It costs around $400, been discounted about $380. The 6700 XT is hanging out around $300, sometimes $320. The RK770 is around that $330 mark. And overall, the 4060 Ti is faster than the 770 by 29%, and the 6800 XT kind of split the difference in between. Uh, that was 1440p without ray tracing. Now, if we turn ray tracing on, we see the 4060 Ti 38% ahead of the A770 and the 6700 XT, again, kind of splitting the difference. Uh, the 6700 XT is close to a 60 FPS average, but it's below it, and, and depending on the scene, can be down in the 40s. The 4060 Ti uh, doing a bit better there. Uh, if we drop down to 1080p resolution, um, we now see without ray tracing on all of the GPUs doing extremely well here. Uh, the A770 is certainly the furthest behind though, and its lead, uh, sorry, it's, it's even further behind than we saw before. It's down in the 70s. The other GPUs are over 100. The 4060 Ti is 44% ahead of the A770, and the 6700 XT is 29% ahead of the A770. If we turn ray tracing on, uh, we now see the 4060 Ti pull further ahead of the A770, but the 6700 XT pull less ahead of the A770. Um, so it gives you an idea of how the ray tracing performance stacks up between the cards. However, the all GPUs are giving a good experience here with even the A770 averaging over 70 frames per second. Um, now, if we drop down another class, we have the RX 7600 from AMD. We haven't had a new gen competitor release from NVIDIA at this, uh, in this class. We do have the ARC A750, uh, which costs a little bit less um, uh, to go up against it. At 1080p high, we see the 7600 20% ahead and both GPUs delivering over 70 or 80 FPS relatively. Uh, if we go ahead and turn on ray tracing at 1080p, we now see the 7600 uh, reduce its lead to 13%, but it is still ahead. And uh, it's, you know, it's mid 60s versus low, low mid 70s kind of average uh, overall. So both GPUs giving a decent experience here. However, uh, if we jump up to 1440p at the high settings, neither GPU is able to average 60 frames per second. Uh, and the 7600 has, has its lead reduced to 8%. But wait, did you just see the video go out on the left-hand side of the screen? That is not um, a mistake in my editing. I kept actually losing connection to my monitor when I went up to 1440p on my ARC A750. Could not solve the problem. It just intermittently did it. And then when I went down to medium settings to try to get us closer to 60 FPS at 1440p, uh, then the image looked very washed out on the A750, and I once again was having it disconnect randomly. Uh, anyway, performance-wise, the 7600 is 10% ahead of the A750, and um, they're both averaging a, a little over 60 FPS at the end of the run. All right, so some final thoughts at the end. First of all, I thought it was uh, interesting just again that the hardware accelerated version of the Lumen lighting system doesn't seem super demanding, which means it didn't overall affect performance so dramatically that it gave NVIDIA GPUs a massive advantage over AMD GPUs, like we see in more demanding ray tracing situations like the heavier ray tracing workloads in something like Cyberpunk RT Ultra, things like that. So if this is a sign of how ray tracing might be used in the future, I think that's very interesting. Um, but another one of uh, the big things I'm taking away from this video is, again, though, that performance overall here seems very high. And I don't necessarily expect that to continue in other future Unreal Engine 5 games, but some there will, some it will be good performance, some I think it won't be. I think a lot of this just depends on what is the developer trying to do with the game. This is a closed in, small space, uh, you know, slow paced horror game, right? Uh, versus, for example, on July 20th, we should be getting the game Immortals of Avium, where the developers have promised that they've just made no, uh, they don't want to sacrifice their vision, they just want to push things as far as they possibly can using Unreal Engine 5. So, in other words, I'm, I'm expecting there to be some other Unreal Engine 5 games that come out and just crush PCs 
uh, in a way that this one didn't. This is a much smaller scale thing. Again, this one was interesting to me just because it's the first third party Unreal Engine 5 game using any of the features. Again, this one mostly uh, looking at the Lumen lighting system, which I did think looked very good here. I, I think some people might criticize, you know, the exact asset quality of this game overall and things like that. I think it looks nice. Um, uh, but again, I think it's a very uh, a smaller budget and smaller studio type game uh, compared to some of the huge uh, AAA open world or, or, or large area stuff that we'll uh, see coming out in the future. So anyway, overall, hopefully you guys found it interesting to see how all of these GPUs stacked up. Um, I, I don't think there was anything uh, majorly surprising other than, again, I think it was nice to see that even with ray tracing enabled, uh, the AMD GPUs did seem to uh, not take too big of a hit. And I think, um, you know, <laughs> this is really maybe not the video to go into my full thoughts on ray tracing, but I will say that just in general, I think ray tracing's a lot more usable when it's done a little more subtly like this and doesn't take that massive performance hit. If we can get some image quality boosts without tanking the performance so badly that you just have to upscale so aggressively that you're then getting a trade-off in making the image quality a little bit worse with upscaling to get some, some image quality increases with ray tracing. Whereas we're seeing um, like, like the lighting system here uh, get some subtle boosts to accuracy without a major performance hit using the RT acceleration, which I just think is in general kind of cool. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm tired from benchmarking so many GPUs, so I'm gonna let you guys go. Huge thank you to everybody who subscribed to the channel, who watches the videos, and especially a uh, huge thank you to anybody who's hit the join button to financially support the channel directly. Um, that is just a massive help, and, and huge thank you to everybody who's wanted to do that, and I hope everyone has an excellent day.